Hello, welcome to Beijing and CBC Sports Saturday. I'm Scott Russell. Today marks the beginning of our coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships from the People's Republic of China. This is Tiananmen Square in the heart of Beijing, and beyond is the world-famous Forbidden City. It's a fitting landmark, really, considering the team that we're following. The Canadian women gymnasts have not qualified for the Olympic Games since 1992 in Barcelona, Spain. For the men, it goes back a little bit beyond that. 1988 in Seoul, South Korea, when Curtis Hibbert was the strength of the team. These world championships mark the one and only chance the Canadians have to qualify for the first games of the new millennium in Sydney, Australia this coming summer. And so it is that the Canadians compete in communist China for a chance to unlock the door to what has become their forbidden city, the Olympic dream. It is an imposing place, the Olympic Gateway. Too long a barrier to Canadian gymnasts. Chances are few. Yvonne Tusek had hers in Atlanta and clings to the rare hope of another in Australia, the lure of the games. Chris Burley knows it too, remembers the taste of it in 96, still hungry for the Olympic harvest which China could offer. Forbidden City, future stars, Alexander Jeltkov knows few boundaries, only bright horizons. 15-year-old Kate Richardson, she has big dreams and little doubt. Like lions at the gate, the Canadians have come to China not to compete, but to conquer the lean years. To get to the games with teams intact and make the Olympics a forbidden city, no more. The site of the competition is the People's Sports Center in Tianjin, and joining me as always is our gymnastics expert analyst, Carol Angela Orchard, who's also a member of the Canadian coaching staff. The women are up first, and for the Canadian team, it's the competition of their lives. Exactly what's at stake in China? Scott, these athletes have Olympic-sized pressure on their shoulders. In order to qualify a full team for Sydney, they must rank among the top 12 nations in the world. But there are 39 other countries competing here that want to do exactly the same thing. Over the past two years, we've heard a lot of positive talk about the potential of this team but today is the day they must prove themselves worthy of Olympic status the battle for the gold medal will focus in on two countries Russia and Romania and the three-time defending world champions while they're in very tough Romania so strong so powerful but they're going up against the star power of Russia Svetlana Horkina is the personification of grace and elegance and contrast her with Elena Prodanova pure explosive power so I think the judges are gonna have a tough decision to make a reminder that this is a team event let's take a quick look at the format and how this all works. Scott, it's critical that each coach gets the starting lineup exactly right. You want the best gymnasts out on the floor competing. For the Canadian women here at the People's Sports Centre, and that is Olympic team qualification. Let's reiterate, the Canadians must be top 12 to get to Sydney. Here is Lise LeVay, 17 years old, of North Vancouver, B.C., on the floor X. Scott, Lee starting on floor is no accident. The concept is very simple. Do not mess with the Pan American Games success. And that's exactly what she did in Winnipeg. Started the team, very strong performance. Gives everyone that boost of confidence. known as a good leadoff performer for Canada from the Flicka Gymnastics Club in North Vancouver, coached here by Nancy Byer. Consistency is really her trademark. Round up at handspring, two and a half punch punt. Every tumbling line is critical spot. The athletes are trying to build up as many bonus points as they possibly can. This turns into jumps, very important for the start value. Every athlete is hoping for a routine that starts out of a full 10 points. Final tumbling line. Round up that handspring double pike. That is a solid start for Team Canada. Well, a nice, clean routine for Lise LeVay of North Vancouver, British Columbia, to get the Canadians started here at the World Championships on their road to Olympic qualification. A little trouble in the second tumbling line. Two and a half, punch front. She tumbles sideways. There will be a deduction for lack of direction. There's a smile. 
Young May Lee, responsible for assisting the Canadian team here in China, a very important figure in Chinese gymnastics, now living in British Columbia, Canada. And the first score there was a 9287 for Lee's Leve. Canadians have gone over this lineup very carefully. One of the role players in this qualification will be Emily Fournier of Montreal, Quebec. A complete change of pace here. Powerful, dynamic, a very much in your face flourishing. Tremendous confidence. <laughs> Way up in the air, double pike. Now, Scott, she's actually capable of doing a double layout. That same element completely stretched. But the team has made sacrifices. They've gone over every routine to make sure only perfect elements are included. From Jim Nixon, Montreal, coached by Francine Bouffard and Claude Pelletier, who is one of the Canadian team coaches here. performing extremely well but right now already on the mind of both the Canadian athletes and their coaches thought was LeVay's score lower than they expected and out of bounds for Fournier the judging is very tough at this event everyone wants to qualify for the Olympic Games tenth off your score when you step out of bounds Remember Emily Fournier at the Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur. She qualified for four event finals. Tremendous tumbler. And actually, Scott, she's equally strong. Forward and backward, very rare. Well, there's the effort of Emily Fournier, 16 years old, of Montreal. Member of that gold medal team at the Pan American Games in Winnipeg this past summer. Again, tremendous power. This is a double pike. She can do it laid out, but the team did not want to risk any extra deduction. She'll save that for a meet in the future. Out from Elvira Sadi, the Canadian team coach, 9062. There's Kate Richardson in on the act. And here is Michelle Conway, 15 years old, Sports Seneca in North York, Ontario. And you know this athlete well. <laughs> Michelle had a lot of trouble warming up this first line. Didn't get it done. Very intricate line. Got it done this time, but Scott, she is out of bounds. That is a one-tenth deduction. A lot of the athletes have had a bit of a struggle getting used to the timing of this floor exercise. Very different construction than what North American athletes are used to tumbling on. Came into her own at the Pan American Games, was silver all around there. Won a silver on the floor exercise, a tremendously dramatic routine. Well, Michelle really likes to strut her stuff. She is very daring, very dramatic. tumbling line. The front tumbling has become very popular with a lot of the gymnasts, and it does give her a point one bonus. Lots of distractions at the World Championships. Must keep the focus right to the end. Double pike. Another solid performance for Canada. And you know, the great indication here is, Carol Angela, these athletes are athletes competing at their first world championships, and so far the jitters haven't been a factor. A very young and experienced team, with the exception of, of course, Tusek. This is a really original line. Only Conway and Victoria Karpenko from Ukraine perform it. But Conway needs a little more practice. That is indeed out of bounds. Julie Beaulieu, the Canadian champion, with Michelle Conway and Elvira Sadi. 9-3 is the score, the highest so far for the Canadians on the floor exercise. The most experienced member of Team Canada is Yvonne Tusek, feeling a sense of common purpose here in China. I think this is one of our strongest teams ever, and the fact that it is finally a team and not seven individuals plays a big part. We have a lot of team spirit, enthusiasm, a lot of talent, and um, when we go out there, we have a good time, and we're cheering for each other, and we really have a sense of team. 19 years old of the Cambridge Kips. These are her four world championships. Oh, incredible start. You cannot 
underestimate the value, the importance of four world championships. Beautiful two and a half punch front, good direction, it's nice and straight, and of course she keeps it in balance. This is my favorite part of her routine. Lots of drama, and yet very elegant. Yvonne really is the leader by example, Scott. There isn't anything that she wouldn't do for this team, and she puts her, her body on the line day in, day out, performing unbelievable skills. Ankles still taped. She's had problems with the ankles in the past. But it never stops her from giving a spectacular performance. A very tough finish planned. Triple twist. And quite frankly, our athletes did not love this floor area. So she's really got to punch it up. And she holds on nicely. Yvonne Tusek did hang on at the end of the routine. Her Canadian teammates salute her performance. Yvonne Tusek, three gold medals at the Pan American Games. One of them was on the floor exercise. Very much a team effort. Tusek doing her bit right here. Strong, two and a half, punch front, great amplitude, nice air time. Here's the result, a huge 9-6-5. Canadians are off to a good start. Their road to Olympic qualification will continue in Tianjin in just a moment. Cultural Street in the heart of Tianjin. Better make the right move. Charlie Richardson made the right move. He's the father of Kate Richardson. Women's team still to compete here. He's waving the Canadian flag and with the men's team who will try for Olympic qualification here in Tianjin. And here is 15-year-old Kate Richardson of British Columbia, youngest member of the team on the vault. And Kate has a lot on her mind right now. This is still a fairly new vault for Kate. And consistency has been a little off. Not today. Scott, can you imagine flying down the runway at top speed and then arching back onto the horse blind? Getting your hands on the horse is critical. And she did it really well. Looks back, finds the horse. Look how straight her body is. When she's on, she does this vault better than anyone. Women will vault twice. They're scored on each and then take an average for a total score. The first vault for Kate Richardson is a 9-2. Here's the second. Yurchenko half, front layout, and that one was even better. I like the distance. The judges sh should give that a higher score. Canadian team coach Claude Peltier greets her. One more look. Look at the stretch. She's a tiny athlete, but the distance away from the horse is important, and she's showing it. Second vault is a 9-2-7-5. They average out at 9-2-3-7. Now Julie Beaulieu, the 16-year-old Canadian national champion from Gymnix in Montreal. And talk about tough through adversity. She is on this team. Sprained her ankle just two weeks ago. And really has had little chance to train that bolt. These are also the first world championships for Julie. Claude Peltier is one of her coaches at Gymnix. You can see there, Scott, everyone's checking out her taping on her ankle to make sure it's exactly right. She still has one vault left to perform. 9187 is the score on the first. She'll perform the same vault again. The same one Richardson did. Half front layout. Really well done. Good stretch and distance. Obviously a step on the landing. That will be a point one deduction. 9187 is the second vault. Exactly the same score for the average. 9187 for Julie Beaulieu. Her teammate from Gymnix, Emily Fournier. This is a power event. One of her specialties. Oh, absolutely. This is why she is on this team. She's the vaulter of this team. Now, every Canadian does this vault with a half twist. Fournier has the ability to add a full twist to it. Very valuable in the judge's eyes. That has a start value of 9.8. So automatically, she's going to score higher. 
take a look. Round off onto the board, bumps up. It's a one and a half twist. Completely blind landing. Winning the first score, there it is. Nine, three, seven, five, as the Canadians are climbing here in the vault. And it's a decent score, Scott. The body just needs to be straighter, completely stretched. That one was slightly better. Obviously, the steps on the landing and deduction just needs to stretch it out a little bit more. Nice to have a familiar coach greet you at the end of the road. Claude Peltier there. And Scott, he knows how critical her score is to the team total. Beautiful entry, round off, bumps it up, one and a half twist, needs to keep stretching it out. Well, Emily Fournier won't compete all four events here in the team competition. But the second ball is a 9-3-8-7 for a good total, 9-3-8-1 to average for Fournier of Canada. The team's already prepping for the bars. They're next when CBC Sports Saturday returns. On Beijing, the last emperor, a blockbuster a few years back, was filmed here. Meantime, Canadian women trying to create a hit of their own in the port city of Tianjin. Kate Richardson's only 15 years old, the youngest member of the Canadian team who has all kinds of room to grow on the uneven bars. Well, bars as an event has been so hard for me to get difficulty. It's taken so long to get this far. And right now, we've got enough difficulty now, and we're really happy with that. Now, we just got to add a little bit more and, and just clean up everything, make it perfect. She has one of the best attitudes of any athlete I've ever seen. 15-year-old Kate Richardson, she's coached by a great guy in David Kenwright. Oh, absolutely. The two of them have worked so hard on this bar routine. Remember at Pan American Games, Scott, that was the first time she ever got through the routine. And we were so excited for her. Flying nicely now. Team coach Claude Peltier will move to the back side of the bars to assist her with the second release move to Kachev needed a little bit more of a handstand position there, but all in all, a strong performance. Her best element is the last one. It's a double layout dismount, and watch how straight she keeps in the air. She's pushing the judges for a good score. Canadian flags in evidence here at the People's Sports Center. There's the team. They know they've got a good routine from Kate Richardson who's really performing well in her first world championships. This is her ginger release move. The only deductions in Kate's bar routine are very slight leg separations. There's one right there. And she, she knows it. She's talked about just need to clean it up a little bit. And you know that bar routine will be sparkling for Sydney. Boy, 9525. And the Canadians know they really have something on the bars. Here's the silver medalist from the Pan American Games on this apparatus, Julie Beaulieu. Take a look at her hands, completely turned around, Eagle Giants into a Markalov release. Extremely difficult to do. Those Eagle Giants require so much wrist, elbow, and shoulder flexibility. Risky release move, Canadian coach right there. And there's no deduction for Clo Peltier standing in, as long as he doesn't have to touch the athlete to assist her. Merely a safety procedure really needs to wind it up double layout dismount <laughs> pretty excited there Julie Beaulieu stands it right up as the Canadians performing well on their third apparatus the uneven bars this is her release move it's a mark love rarely seen you need such a powerful front swing to initiate it Gymnics teammates Emily Fournier, Julie Beaulieu, 9-4-3-7 for Beaulieu on the bars. Canadians are right where they want to be, and isn't it nice when you can put these two members of a team back-to-back -back on the bars? Gold medalist from the Pan Am Games, Yvonne Tuset. World-class combinations. Truly an exciting bar routine to watch. She gets right down to business. Healy into a perfect Pike Jaeger. Doesn't stop there. Big Hindor. That's a crowd pleaser. Rarely ever performed because it's so difficult, so daring. Remember, she was world class on the bars even back in 1996 at the Atlanta Olympics. For a while, Yvonne was in seventh place all around. 
trying to initiate a lot of swing, double layout, holds on to the landing, very few deductions. Runs right off the podium into the arms of Elvira Sadi, her coach. And her teammates. This is very much a team effort. You can see how they're really pulling for each other. 9-5-7-5. Charlie Richardson and Michelle LeVay, Lisa's dad. They watch on. Now the Canadians march on to the balance beam as Olympic qualification continues here in Tianjin. Lise LeVay is a key member of the Canadian effort in China, particularly on the balance beam, where she has been the rock for her team in the recent past. Lise LeVay, British Columbian, brimming with hope, a teenager in China with an ambition only few can dare. It's always been a dream. I mean, I, every little kid in the sport probably dreams to come to the top of their sport and world championships and Olympics and everything. But, I mean, there's times where I thought that it wouldn't happen during injuries or something. And then there's times where I thought, yeah, this is a possibility. And it's just, it's amazing to be here, and I'm really excited. Rock is solid, and so is she. LeVay has stood firm for her team so many times, it makes her a part of the foundation. Well, the national coach has chosen me to go up first on the event to start the team off with a steady beginning so the judges can uh, start the scores there and then the team can continue to build on it. We've been together for a month in July and now we've been together for another month here so we're almost like sisters now. We know each other so well and I think we feel that out on the floor and we know what to expect from one another and uh, we've really come to know all the little nooks and crannies that we have and coming together and realizing them that really it really turns us into a true team. The beam is where she draws the line. Lise LeVay rarely misses, and at the Pan Am Games, she ignited a near-perfect balancing act, which yielded Canadian gold. Beating the Americans at Pan Ams was unbelievable. We were so excited, and it gave us so much more confidence. I mean, now we go out there, and hey, we beat them. We're up there with them. Nobody's going to intimidate us anymore, and I think it really helped our confidence and our our whole morale and everything. Well, this is the event for Lise LeVay. She does not compete all four here at the World Championships, but the balance beam is a must. And she is right on. Tremendous pressure right now. Balance beam is tough at the best of times, but to end an Olympic qualification competition on this event, that's almost cruel. Ooh, excellent cover. Scott, you saw on the second layout, she was just starting to wobble. Tried to move right into her choreography to minimize the deduction. On the gold medal on the beam at the Pan American Games. The secret to her success is how she can absorb right into the beam, very deep knee action. It allows her to connect all of her elements for valuable bonus points. as a shock absorber. Quiet in the arena right now. Floor exercise not operating. She's on her own. And <laughs> sometimes that's worse. Most of these athletes react very well to loud noises, lots of distraction. The Swiss with their bells. <laughs> but the silence can be deadly. Not affecting Lee's. A good start. Great expression in gymnastics. She did her job. There's her coach, Nancy Beyer. 9-4-6-2 for Lise LeVay. There's her dad, Michelle, former CFL football player with the British Columbia Lions. Now Yvonne Tusek. And the pressure of Olympic qualification continues. Tusek has a daring routine. Lots of risk and innovation. And the Canadians, to this point, have had a very successful competition. No falls at all. And Tusek looks solid. Key to the balance beam is the judging. That goes without saying. Putting the elements together and then drawing the best possible score. There are two experts responsible for determining the start value on every event. On balance beam at this World Championships, 
One expert is from the United States and the other one is from Australia. And it's up to the two of them to decide if they would give you credit for the element or if they won't. That's a lot of power, Scott. Big move for two set. Back handspring. Oh, it almost looked as though she didn't see the beam to put her foot on it. Normally does that skill extremely well. But there is the first fall for the Canadians. The first little blip in what has been a spectacular performance here in Tianjin. Now, obviously, Scott, the experts on the panel won't give her credit for that skill, but the rest of the routine look good. Little step back on the dismount. Yvonne Tusek now, trepidation after her balance beam routine. And you know she's going to be feeling just sick about this. She can do this well. She wanted a good score for the team. It will be a .5 deduction for the fall, but this score is too low. It's obvious the two experts are not giving her credit for many of the elements in the routine. 8437 dramatically low for Yvonne two seconds up to Michelle Conway now and just harken back to what she did at the Pan American Games this summer she was last up on the balance beam for Canada nailed it and it was a gold medal she's felt this pressure before Scott and she's starting quite solid Now, right now, the Canadians have no idea if they're ranking high enough to qualify for the Olympic Games or not. So they really need to keep that distraction out of their heads. Illusion full into a jump. The only athlete to do an illusion full at the World Championships, but there was a slight hesitation prior to the jump. So that combination won't be given. Punch front jump, but that one should be. Which, oh, her foot was on the side of the beam. Had to really fight to hang on. Continuing on with confidence. Now, obviously, large error. At, up to a point five. Any way you look at it, the balance beam is a tough place to finish, particularly with the Olympics on the line. Conway doing her best to be as solid as possible. The switch split will be a large deduction, but the rest seem to be on the money. 15-year-old Michelle Conway of Sports Seneca. There are the Canadian fans, members of the men's team, and parents. And another look at Michelle. The start value for that routine was 8.9, which means the judges didn't give her credit for anything in that routine. Well, they'll deal with that later. Right now, the feeling is one of relief. The Canadian women are 10th. That means they're going to the Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, very close to the top eight, but for the judging. But right now, for Canada, it's mission accomplished. Please, you made it. Close Peltier team coach, give us a sense, a feeling of what you're going through right now. It's a wonderful feeling. I think it's um, wonderful, that's all. <laughs> We're so happy for our result. And now we have to prepare the team for 2000. So let's do it now. <laughs> Yvonne Tusek, you did a great job. The entire team did. Give us a sense of what you're feeling after this competition. Well, I know all of these gymnasts and all of the coaches have been working really hard. And our goal coming in was top 12. And to be 10th is an amazing result for us. And we're so excited to be sending a full team to the Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. We're a little bit confused about the beam scores on our last rotation, but we'll get that all figured out. And right now, I think we have a little bit of celebrating to do. Woo! Go team! Woo!